So I want to thank the organizers for the invitation to this great meeting. Uh, I will be talking about key novel agents for relapsed large cell lymphoma, and we have heard uh, about many of them already, um, particularly today, this morning. So besides distinguishing um, uh, cell of origin type large cell lymphomas uh, on a a uh, genetic level, um, the large cell lymphomas are very heterogeneous with uh, multiple um, genetic ab abnormalities. None of them really stand out abnormalities, and many of them shared between ABC and GCB subtypes, which makes the development of uh, targeted therapies difficult in this entity. This is the reason uh, why we need a better uh, salvage regimen and novel agents. And in fact, we need uh, better upfront regimens to avoid the uh, dilemma of uh, primary refractory large cell lymphoma uh, in the first place. Uh, for the ABC type large cell lymphoma, uh, uh, targeting the B cell receptor uh, pathway has been very uh, uh, promising uh, and an active field. Uh, many of the agents uh, tests that are listed here already. I will focus on Ibutinib based on the fact that we have the most data available uh, for this drug. <clears throat> and uh, in an early um, phase one study, uh, there was a preferential response rate in the ABC subtype lymphoma. Single agent Ibutinib produced uh, an overall response rate of 37%. Uh, versus 5% uh, in the GCB setting. Uh, this um, uh, response, however, was not very long uh, lasting. The median progression for survival in the ABC subtype was only two months. Trying to understand um, the uh, responses versus uh, the lack of thereof, um, the uh, Stout lab um, uh, analyzed uh, the mutational status of um, different components of the B cell receptor pathway as well as the MIDE88. Uh, pathway and uh, to make a, a long story short, um, uh, certain components, um, uh, if there would be a mutation in, in the CD79B uh, as well as my D8 mutation, would predict for a high response rate versus a CARD11 mutation downstream of BDK would indicate that uh, BDK inhibition would not be effective. Trying to build on this, uh, the South Lab uh, looked at. Um, <clears throat> Um, uh, screens uh, that identified lenalidomide as the most potent um, combination partner. Um, and as a result of that, a, a study, PCYC 1124, was launched combining dose-adjusted EPOC with um, ibutinib and lenalidomide. Um, and full dose, uh, lenalidomide full dose uh, ibutinib uh, um, for seven days in a 21-day cycle could be combined with EPOC. It was feasible, it was safe and tolerable, and no uh, dose reductions of uh, EPOC was uh, required in response. If the um, uh, results are better, um, with the addition of these two novel agents, of course, are, are difficult to tell without any comparative uh, study available. The concept of uh, just these two agents, ibutinib and lenalidomide, plus minus with toxins, also being tested in a randomized study right now, PC. Uh, YC 1121 in relapse refractory large lymphoma and ABC subtypes, um, and that will be an interesting study to follow. Now, the um, um, constellation of uh, MIDI 88 and uh, um, uh, CD 79B mutation that predict a response for large lymphoma is very prominent in primary CNS lymphomas. And that um, uh, led to a, a new development of a uh, um, trial for CNS lymphomas for uh, new diagnosed and relapsed uh, CNS lymphoma patients. And without going into the chemo part of it, I would like to uh, point attention to the two weeks uh, run-in period of ibutinib uh, prior to starting the chemo arm. And that was highly effective. As you can see, that most patients uh, really responded uh, to ibutinib alone uh, with uh, over 80% achieving a CRCIU, and you see an, an active uh, um, responding patient in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, this activity of uh, ibutinib in CNS lymphoma has been replicated by many uh, study groups in the interim. Um, so lenalidomide uh, was known to be an active agent in large lymphoma. An unselected patient population uh, has an overall response rate of 28% with a medium duration of response of 4.6 months. When looking at uh, cell of origin data, um, there were, again was a, a preference uh, for responses in the uh, non-GCB setting with an overall response rate of 52.9% versus 8.7%. Uh, increased uh, CR rates and progression-free survival of 6.2 versus 1.7 months. Dr. Zinzani uh, treated LDD relapsed patients with um, a 12-month um, course uh, Two months of lenalidomide plus rituximab, followed by eight months of lenalidomide maintenance. 
Uh, these were uh, 23 de novo uh, large lymphoma patients. An all response rate of 35% uh, was noted. 10 patients moved on to maintenance. And as, as a follow -up, um, at a follow-up of 6.5 years, the overall survival is still 34.8%, which is quite remarkable in this patient population. And six of the responders um, are still in CR, um, and the medium duration of CR was five years. And the most striking um, uh, data, I think, data point from this is that these patients were exposed to study drug uh, for 12 months and then stopped. And these responses and these responding patients lasted on. Now, uh, the combination of lenalidomide with a monoclonal antibody, more uh, 208, uh, just a few days ago, received um, FDA um, um, breakthrough therapy designation based on uh, interim data of this trial. So CD19 um, uh, is the target uh, of uh, more uh, 208. Um, and in combination with lenalidomide, in 31 out of 80 planned patients has uh, led to an overall response rate of 58% uh, with a CR rate of 27%, uh, which is rather striking in this relapse refractory patient population. So that is something to uh, keep an eye on. In German center large cell lymphomas, uh, targeting the uh, PN3 kinase um, uh, AKT mTOR pathway uh, is, is a valid target, uh, targeting CMYK, BCL6, uh, and BCL2. All targets are being uh, pursued. Now, Everlimus, um, an mTOR inhibitor, is known to be active in uh, large cell lymphoma with an overall response rate of 30%. We, we use it uh, off label and in, in scenarios uh, where, uh, where chemotherapy may not be doable anymore. Uh, but targeting uh, the PN3 kinase pathway on a um, show data that were presented at um, uh, Lugano, uh, the TGR1202 PN3 kinase uh, delta inhibitor that has single agent activity in large cell lymphoma that was combined with um, a next generation C20 antibody, uh, oblituximab and benamustine in patients with advanced um, stage, um, advanced uh, large cell lymphoma and um, uh, follicular lymphoma and the schedule is depicted here. In that uh, study, um, four relapse patients with large lymphoma included, all of them uh, responded, uh, two of them 50% with a CR, and 12 patients with refractory lymphoma were included, refractory large lymphoma, half of them responded, um, and <clears throat> um, five of those, uh, however, with a CR. So these were uh, promising um, data. It's, of course, difficult to say what uh, one would accomplish with um, venomustine uh, and CD20 antibody alone in uh, large cell lymphoma, and we don't have any comparator uh, arm to, to assess this, but these are certainly um, an interesting, promising data, and some of these responders uh, are going on uh, beyond um, a year. In terms of toxicity, it was tolerable. Uh, hematologic toxicity, neutropenia, was the most common, and um, for PN3 kinase inhibitors, the um, grade 3, 4 AEs um, inducing diarrhea, that was only uh, noticed in 9% with this um, uh, um, PN3 kinase inhibitor. In a chemo-free triplet of <clears throat> um, TGR1202 plus ibutinib and uh, CD20 uh, monoclonal antibody, these data were uh, presented at uh, uh, the Lugano meeting as well. Uh, only a handful of large cell lymphomas uh, were included, uh, six, and only one of those responded, uh, contrary to all the low-grade lymphomas that responded nicely. So it's, early, it's too early to tell um, what this combination would do for large cell lymphomas. We have no uh, data on cell of origin, and uh, I think more uh, case will be needed to assess this uh, further. Now, to get to the bottom of the single agent activity of TGR um, <clears throat> uh, 1202, uh, plus minus, um, a, um, a monoclonal antibody obliquituximab um, uh, randomized study is going on right now uh, that is active in rolling patients. It would be interesting uh, to follow this as well. Now, uh, Copanizib, which uh, just got FDA approved for inland lim relapse uh, lymphomas, uh, is a pan class 1 PNT kinase inhibitor. It had a single agent activity, modest activity, unselected large cell lymphomas, and Dr. Lenz uh, just uh, showed at ASCO. Uh, data um, uh, looking at cell of origin, um, and there was a preferential response in ABC subtypes with an overall response of 37.5 versus 13.6 in GCBs um, in the setting. He further looked at any other uh, markers that might affect uh, the response to Copanazib and looked at BCL2, 6, MIC, and MIDI88, but none of these um, correlated. The side effect profile um, uh, was what one would expect with a pan-pantheic kinase inhibitor with a transient hypertension hypoglycemia 
hyperglycemia, um, as noted. Uh, we saw these data uh, this morning targeting EZH2, an epigenic regulator and transcriptional uh, repressor, uh, often, uh, let's say, in, in less than 20%, a mutate in fritic lymphoma and GCB large lymphoma, not to be found in ABC large lymphomas. Um, and uh, we saw the uh, data on uh, tazimidostat, which is the selective uh, oral inhibitor of mutated as well as unmutated wild type AZH2. Here's a uh, large lymphoma response, heavily pretreated response after 24 weeks. And so in the um, 136 patients with large lymphoma, um, 17 were uh, EZH2 mutated. In that uh, setting, the oral response rate was 29%. That response rate was cut in half in the uh, wild-type EZH2 uh, diffuse large lymphoma patients, however. In that population, uh, 10 or 8% of patients had a complete remission. So the best responses were seen in the wild-type uh, patients. So that, um, that uh, uh, shows the importance to uh, look at uh, mutated um, targets to enrich, uh, but also uh, uh, to, to study um, unmutated uh, targets to, to catch and evaluate and find a, um, response uh, associated biomarkers uh, in, um, in responding patients that do not carry a mutation. And I think these um, analyses are ongoing. We don't have any good um, predictors for response at this point. Panobinostat, a pan um, HDAC inhibitor, has activity recently published in blood uh, in relapsed large lymphoma over response rate um, uh, 28%, CR rate 18%, and the medium duration was pretty good with 14.5 months. Uh, in this study, the authors looked at uh, biomarkers and, in fact, identified uh, out of a panel of uh, markers studied uh, MEF2B mutations that were significantly associated uh, with response. Of course, something like that would need to be prospectively validated and studied. Um, there is a, a dual HDAC uh, PN3 uh, kinase inhibitor in uh, developments called uh, CUDC907. It's a um, almost pan PN3 kinase inhibitor and HDAC inhibitor. Uh, that combination uh, may uh, counteract a possible mechanism to HDAC inhibition, uh, a mechanism of resistance that is PN3 kinase activation, a built-in mechanism of uh, counteracting uh, resistance potentially. And uh, I just point this out uh, here. Uh, a poster was uh, shown at, um, at ASH that this compound with venetoclax in vitro was synergistic and uh, may um, uh, lead, the, uh, lead to a clinical trial down the line. At least um, the rationale um, was provided. What was interesting in the single agent data um, recently published um, uh, of CUDC907 in relapsed refractory large cell lymphoma is that um, particular patients with CMIC alterations uh, seem to be responding to this uh, compound. So the overall response rate in a uh, 37 uh, patient uh, uh, trial, 14 with MIC alterations, uh, was 64% for MIC altered versus 29% for MIC unaltered large lymphomas. That also translated in a better uh, medium duration of response, 13.6 versus 6.0 months. An expansion trial is ongoing and um, uh, we eagerly await uh, follow-up data. Uh, of course, targeting BCL2 is a very uh, important target in, uh, in lymphoma, particularly large cell lymphoma. ABT199, uh, here we have the most data available. It inhibits BCL2, and MCL1 as well as BCLXL overexpression are possible mechanisms of resistance to this drug. In the um, single agent trial of ABT199, uh, in, uh, that included uh, 34 large lymphoma patients. The response rate was modest, 18% uh, and 12% uh, CRs. A handful of patients with Victor's transformation uh, responded better, but the numbers were very low. And the median progression of survival in a large lymphoma patient was really low. It was only one month. Uh, combining um, venetoclax with chemotherapy uh, with benamustine metaxin in a phase one dose finding study that also included large cell lymphomas um, 22 of them, in fact, uh, the overall response rate there was 41% with a CR rate of 14%. The um, median progression free survival was 3.6 months, and the, um, the study, of course, did not have a comparator, uh, and therefore we don't know um, if the addition of um, uh, venoclax to this 
backbone, which is not your classical backbone for relapse in large lymphoma, uh, is beneficial. Here's the uh, duration of response for this combination, um, 8.4 months for the diffuse large lymphoma patient cohort. Um, mechanisms of resistance, the over uh, expression of MCL1 is a uh, known, side, uh, known um, uh, mechanism of resistance to venetoclax. There was uh, originally a study planned to combine venetoclax with duvalizib uh, to target that. That trial didn't move forward, but uh, the same concept is currently evaluated uh, with a different uh, BCL2 inhibitor, BCL201 plus idalizib, and that will be an interesting study to follow. So there are a lot of uh, uh, trials going on with venetoclax in combination with novel agents um, that, uh, that are of high interest. One would be a BET, BET inhibitor plus venetoclax with or without vetoxan. Um, that would be particularly interesting for uh, double hit lymphomas where you might target uh, both hits. Uh, a combination of um, um, ABT19 with ibutinib and vetoximab, a combination of obitunib with uh, venetoclax and a uh, uh, obinutuzumab or rituxan plus pulatuzumab, vedotin, and venetoclax uh, combination. And uh, a regimen from the uh, NIH uh, called Vipor, which uh, combines a lot of agents, venetoclax, ibutinib, pretnisone, obinutuzumab, and revlimid. It's, uh, I view it as the chemo-free uh, equivalent of uh, EPOC, uh, if you will. So these uh, are chemo-free um, uh, regimens that are very interesting and uh, I think uh, will um, <clears throat> be very informative. Of course, the uh, combination of venetoclax with ARCHOP or dose-adjusted EPOC uh, is being evaluated uh, in frontline setting as we speak. Um, this is a different class of drug. Um, so the Nexor is a oral selective inhibitor exoportin. Exportin 1, uh, which um, <clears throat> pumps um, tumor suppressor proteins, oncoprotein uh, messenger RNAs, uh, out of the uh, nucleus, highly expressed in diffuse large B cell lymphomas. And interim data from an ongoing study showed an overall response rate of 33%, which was interesting uh, to me was that uh, 14 uh, patients in this study uh, were double hit or triple hit large cell lymphomas with an equal response rate of 35%. Um, the study had two arms of 60 and 100 milligrams twice weekly and uh, is ongoing uh, for the 60 milligram arm uh, as the, uh, uh, both arms are of equal uh, efficacy, but uh, 60 milligrams less are toxic. Now, most excitement <clears throat> has been generated recently by immunotherapeutic approaches to large lymphomas, particularly um, checkpoint inhibitors and, of course, CAR T cells that just recently um, uh, led to an FDA approval, as discussed this morning. The uh, PDL1 expression is more common in the non GCB uh, large cell lymphomas as well as in the primary medicine large B cell lymphomas. The nivolumab um, um, single agent study included 11 diffuse large B cell lymphoma patients and a uh, response rate of 36%, a CR rate of 18, that was actually two patients, that was noted in the study. And the duration of these uh, CRs were uh, six and 77 and counting uh, weeks. And you see the spider plot of the development of the tumor burden uh, on this study. Um, the pembrolizumab data um, available uh, are for uh, medicine large B cell lymphomas, uh, we know in the original uh, Keynote 13 trial uh, that a response rate of 48% and CR rate of 24% was, was seen, and Dr. Zinzani updated um, the Keynote 170 study uh, at the uh, Lugano meeting. And uh, overall response rate of 41% um, was uh, noted with a complete remission rate of 14%. Uh, Treatment-related uh, AEs were 53%, but they were manageable. No treatment-related deaths were noted. Um, here's the um, waterfall plot. Of course, the responses are not that surprising as, um, uh, like in Hodgkin lymphoma, primary cell large lymphoma has 9P24 um, uh, copy number alterations and rearrangements leading to overexpression of PDL1 and PDL2, as do primary testicular uh, lymphomas and primary CNS lymphomas. Here, an example of a responding patient uh, with a CR after, two cy after 12 cycles and a heavily pretreated. Uh, situation prior to that. Um, there's now an, an enormous amount of uh, combination trials that are either ongoing or considered combining checkpoint inhibitors with um, uh, various uh, other um, uh, partners, chemotherapy, chemoimmunotherapy, small molecule inhibitors, immunomodulatory agents, even thoughts of combining it with CAR T cells in this specific sequence. 
And um, uh, while this is all exciting, one has to be really careful uh, not to amplify um, uh, immune-mediated um, side effects in the setting. So I think these studies have to be done and will be done um, uh, very carefully. Um, of course, most excitement uh, is the uh, recent FDA approval of uh, CAR T cells. We, we didn't have any uh, approvals uh, for large and for a long time, and this has finally changed. It's certainly a transformative uh, new treatment. And uh, we have seen the data that led to this approval, Zuma 1 data, uh, this morning um, of a uh, combined overall response rate of 82% with CR rate of 54%. Um, the uh, medium duration of response for um, CR patient was not reached yet, and uh, the overall response, um, the, the uh, duration of response for all responding patients was 8.2 uh, months at a follow-up of 8.7 months. Uh, I think we went through the uh, toxicities in detail this morning, so I will skip that in the interest of time. The other um, CAR T cell uh, uh, drug approved uh, for ALL in uh, the childhood setting, which was also uh, tested in large lung form, presented at um, Lugano, uh, is a Juliet study with an overall response rate of 59%, CR rate of 43%, also discussed in detail this morning. And about 80% of patients uh, were still relapsed for six months, um, and that are certainly very promising uh, data. I'm going to skip the uh, adverse events of special interest again because we discussed that in detail this morning. And uh, we'll close with a very busy slide. Uh, there is an enormous amount of novel agents uh, being tested in diffuse cell species lymphoma, and I certainly have omitted uh, some, so if anybody uh, feels uh, um, neglected, uh, here's an excellent review um, that discusses ongoing um, uh, studies as well as potential novel targets. And um, we have biomark we certainly need biomarkers for better therapy selection uh, in these um, uh, drugs that give us uh, moderate uh, responses that we need to understand. The complex genetic background of large lymphoma requires that we use novel combinations to improve on single agent data. And the goal has to be to separate uh, synergistic efficacy from possible synergistic toxicities. Thank you for your attention.